Now I'm nervous. I'm kidding. Um, so, but I, I'm really excited to be able to uh, converse with you about how you can bring coaching tools to what you do in your industry. So, um, but as Pat said, the, how we're going to um, approach this webinar is that I have some information to give to you. It's going to take about uh, 30 minutes probably. And then the last half of this, I, and I'm actually eager for this part, is to hear your questions and ideas about how you can maybe use these coaching tools uh, in your industry, in, in the Concierge uh, industry. And I'm so, uh, I'm so excited for this. So thank you. Thank you, Pat, for uh, asking me. And uh, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So real quickly, um, what we're going to be doing um, is this webinar is going to explore common coaching tools to help you extrapolate from your clients what they truly want, thus creating a win-win scenario for everyone. And I promise I'm not going to read every slide. <laughs> uh, so let's go to the next slide. So um, who am I? Um, and uh, Pat already kind of told you, uh, but I am a life coach, a leadership coach. And what I do is I partner with clients to create the life of their dreams. Uh, this is my personal uh, coaching business. I also coach leaders in leadership skills, and I also am a, a mediator uh, for conflict resolution. So that's kind of my background. But what I'm really going to focus on today is my um, life coaching with my personal clients uh, because my job is to make sure they get the life of their dreams. And uh, your job is to make sure that your clients get the events or whatever it may be that, that they want. So I, I feel like we're kind of, uh, we have similar goals. So again, that's why I'm excited to kind of see how uh, the coaching can help the uh, concierge business and vice versa. I can't wait to hear how your industry may help mine. So um, more specifically, what I do is I must figure out what they want, what my clients truly want. And then I have to get them to commit to a plan. And uh, how I do this, I connect inner purpose and passion to their goals. Uh, when you connect to someone's values, uh, that's when people take action. I can get anyone to stop eating for 30 days if that's their goal. Let's, I, can, I can cheerlead them. You know, stop eating, yay, yay, yay. But after 30 days, what happens? Well, they go back to eating, you know, what they're used to eating, unless it fits into their values, something that they uh, really have passion about. So, uh, and, and, and the other thing about this is it, it, it's almost a buy-in for the goal. So um, I must get them to be specific, specific about what they want and also not what other people want. Because so much of the time, I think my clients, they come to me wanting things, and then I find out it's not really them wanting it, but it's actually what other people want. Or you know, uh, the, the, it's their friends, their parents, whatever it may be. And then when they get what they uh, have asked for, they wonder why they're not happy. And I would think in, in, in your industry, that um, it's really important for people to be able to connect what they want so you can give them the experience that they want because, let's face it, that is what they're asking for is an experience. Okay? So let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So what is your goal? Um, and I, I please uh, speak up if, if this is not right, but in my um, information of what you do, I, I would assume that your goal is to partner with clients to get them what they want. Um, and I know that when people value something, when it fits into what they want, that's when they buy it uh, in coaching. You know, people have to see that it's valuable before they'll hire me uh, as their coach. So uh, that, that's really important. So I want to stop right now, and I want to make sure that I'm on the right track. So how are people feeling about that? And please state your name before you speak. Yeah, anybody? <laughs> uh, this this is Alex, and and uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm in sales. I'm not in concierge, but uh, uh, I would I would very much uh, agree with that. That's a good fit. Great. Good. Good. Um. So it's interesting, though, that I think in in the goal of getting to partner with clients to get them what they want, um, and and Alex, you just mentioned sales. So I I wonder if the goal of selling or helping. Um, another way to put it is I think sometimes with trying to get people, I mean, because we, I mean, as a coach, I profit when people come, come work with me, of course. But also, if I get them to come work with me, 
what is my intention? Is it to, and I, I'm going to put this, you know, broadly, but am I manipulating them, trying to sell them on something? Or am I trying to be their partner and to get them, uh, to, to help them? And of course I'm going to profit, but, but, but I think that approaching something as if I'm trying to sell it, people feel that. And in coaching, there is a certain amount of trust that needs to be built. My clients need to believe that I, and it's true, that I want the best for them. If I didn't want the best for them, I shouldn't be a coach. Okay, so my goal is to get them the life that they desire. That's my goal. Even in coaching, like, I, I don't have a, a, a real set agenda about what I think they should have. Uh, I want them to have exactly what they want. So it's interesting because I, before being a coach, I was an acting, an actor. Uh, I was a professional actor for 10 years. And I had an acting teacher who once said to me that you can only have one intention at one time. What does this mean? So for an actor, if I want to pick up a glass of water and I say to them, you know, I'm, you know, I'm thirsty as if I want to take a drink of water, or I can say I'm thirsty as in subtext, as in leave me alone, I'm saying the same thing, but it's with a different intention. So we can do the same action, same words, but depending on our intention, it, that determines how it comes across. Okay. Any thoughts on this? Comments, concerns, regrets? <laughs> I have to say it is so weird to talk to. Uh, I, these webinars are always so weird for me because I am in my living room right now looking at my uh, computer. Uh, I feel like talking to myself, so uh, I, I just find these always so interesting. So um, that's me. But anyway, so if there's no questions, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Okay. So Christy Anderson, who is um, a real, real estate person, she said, my team and I do not consider ourselves salespeople, but rather consultants who provide information to enable our clients to make informed decisions. And I thought that was interesting. Um, I, I think that there is a lot of similarities between that, that statement and also what, what you do. Um, what do you guys think on that? I think that's a great statement. This is Debbie and <laughs> Um, well, I think that's a very valid. I think that's a very valid thing. That's how I I perceive myself for my clients because I'm not. Um, I don't consider myself a salesperson, although everyone I know says I'm a salesperson. Um, but I don't think of my. I don't. I don't feel like I have that um, that gift. I can lead you to it, but I'm not good at closing the deal because the minute I start having to ask for money, I choke. Ah, okay. <laughs> I, and I think it's very common, you know, and I, I can relate to that. And uh, I think you're bringing that up. And Debbie, I think that, uh, and I do agree with you, I think that the more, at least for me, the more I can, um, I, again, coaching my clients to what they want to give them the products they want, you know, that I definitely, it's easier for me to then uh, to accept a client into my, into my coaching uh, world. So uh, thank you for that. Um, anybody else before I move on? Okay, so this statement is great. Okay, and the reason I bring all this up is it's providing, uh, again, the talk is to coach your clients and to giving them what they want. The first step is to provide a safe place for them to be coached. Uh, again, if my clients feel like I have an agenda, uh, that I want them to make a decision, uh, a certain decision, then they don't feel safe enough to tell me what they really want. And that is the key. If I'm going to be their coach, and I'm going to get them the life that they want, I need them to tell me what exactly they do want. What clients truly want and what their values are that they're trying to fulfill. That is my goal. Okay? Uh, let's go on to the next slide, please. Because very often clients come to the table not knowing exactly what they want. Well, I'm sure nobody on this call can relate to that but I'm going to pretend you can. <laughs> okay? Um, if they don't know what they want, it's hard to help someone because, well, obviously, then how can you deliver it? So a lot of times with my coaching clients, they'll come to me and they know that they want a different life. What they have is not working, but they don't know what to do to get or what they need to work, okay? And with this, they get overwhelmed, 
and then they get reactive instead of responsive. Okay, and that's really important. Reactive versus responsive, reacting to, which is usually, I, I like to say, out of, of, out of fear, you know, or trying to, I think we've all had reaction, you know, and sometimes it's not exactly uh, what we're meaning to say or do, versus responding where we have the, uh, where we have the safety in the room to really kind of consider what is it we do want, okay? And if this is not remedied, if we cannot find out exactly what they want, well, then we're, we're wasting their time and ours, okay? And how do we get them to realize what they want and let go of the fear to actually go for it, okay, to actually tell you what they want? Make sense to everybody? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the problem. So let's, let's move on to the next slide. Because I think you guys are here to hear solutions, not, not problems. So. Um, so helping clients discover what they truly want and value, how we can do this, okay? Um, so in coaching, we ask open-ended questions, okay? Now open-ended questions allows the client to think through kind of what they want. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. So uh, compared to leading questions, now an open-ended question might be, so um, what restaurant would you like to eat at? Or what kind of restaurant? Or what kind of food? Okay. And I think you can hear that, that, that question. I have no agenda. You know, I really don't care what restaurant, you know, but I need to get this information in order to make sure you get the kind of restaurant you want to go to. Compared to, um, you don't want Italian, do you? Right there, I told you exactly <laughs> what my thought is. You know? And so people will go, you have, oh, an, you have an Italian agenda there, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> or not an, not an Italian agenda, yeah. But um, <laughs> that's great. Um, so uh, I would say for coaching, now, Ask me open ended questions and, and let me define this. Open ended questions are questions that cannot be answered yes or no. Okay? So this sounds pretty easy, right? I will say in coaching school, it took me six months to master the open ended question. And I invite you and challenge you that after this call to just notice how many times you use closed ended questions versus uh, open ended questions. Okay? Now, it's nothing tragic if you ask a closing good question, but um, in coaching, I always try to think, am I lowering the wall of defensiveness or resistance to a client, client or am I doing something to raise it? And sometimes it's closing the question, you know, it, it kind of raises that so they, they don't feel um, uh, the freedom to talk to me. So I need to watch out that I, that I ask open-ended questions. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay. The next thing is being curious rather than having an agenda. And I've already kind of, a, 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 kind of uh, addressed this. Um, but a lot of times, even with our friends, family, um, or just in general, when people ask a question, it's, it's rarely out of curiosity because they're curious about us, but it's usually because of a frame of reference for something that they want or information that really pertains to them. Rarely do people come to us and just curious about us. And people love to talk, especially about themselves. So building trust, you know, this is another trust building thing, is that if you approach someone with just plain curiosity, um, it, 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 it usually affects them in a good way. <laughs> okay? So that's something to think about. Am I being curious or is there something I want? The other thing is challenging clients to be specific and think outside the box. Uh, this seems like a duh, but there are times when they'll say, well, I want to go to an Italian restaurant. Okay, tell me more. What kind, of a, what kind of Italian restaurant would you like to go to? Or tell me about your favorite kind of Italian food. So pastas or do you prefer you know, the more meats, whatever it may be. Okay? Again, getting them to be as specific as possible. And a lot of times they may not have thought through this. So when asking these uh, questions, don't be afraid of silence or pauses. Because usually when there's a silence, that means you asked a really good question, okay? And now if you have, you know, clients who say, you know, I, I don't know, you know, 
invite them to pretend that maybe they do know or give them permission to be wrong. Uh, and what I mean by in coaching, I'll sometimes ask a question and clients go, I, I don't know. I will say, well, what if you did know? And I'm not saying this might be appropriate for all your clients because I could see if I was working with someone, uh, you know, uh, trying to, I was trying to find an event with or I was talking to a concierge at a hotel, um, I might get a little annoyed by that. Um, but the point is, is that sometimes people are scared to say the wrong thing or they're shy. So a, a way to maybe think of how to address these clients by giving them permission to think outside the box you know, and sometimes brainstorming is a great way to do this. You know, providing answers, you know, a couple of you know, extreme answers so they can see that you know, you're not judging them for their answers. Uh, that can be useful. Well, so most gonna... of my clients want me to figure it out. Mm. I mean, I, I can ask questions, but a lot of times you'll make a suggestion and they'll say, well, you know, you, ju- you just do it. You just, you just figure it out. Okay. So... I, and I'm talking. I'll, I'll I'll give an example of um, like you're you're planning an event, and you'll say, well, did you you know do you have a theme? Do you have no no no? Just just you just do it. And so, I mean, that's easy for some things, but a lot of the stuff that I do, they don't want to think about it. That's why they're telling yeah. me they give me the general idea, and they're like, you go with it. So let me ask you this: And who is this? Is this Debbie? Sorry. Yes. Uh, sorry. Yes. Debbie. No, 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 that's okay. Hi, Debbie. So, right, I, I completely, um, I, I would understand that. But what about a question of saying, um, instead of saying, tell me what you want, um, well, let's flip to the next slide, because I actually think I addressed this on my next slide. And these are called power questions. So if you look down at the second question, you know, so imagine you finish your event. What does it look like, some of the top three reason, reasons you want an event or, or your, your event was successful. And again, Debbie, I, I get that they really don't want to think a lot, but the point is don't ask them to think about the event that you're planning. Just in general, like, you know, oh, you know, what events have you gone to recently? You know, as, as casual as possible, because I, and they may not want to think that may be part of it, but maybe they're just kind of, um, they get overwhelmed. Does that make sense? Am I in the right yeah. track, Debbie, or am I? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Just kind of like, so... So it's kind of, uh, the, 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 okay, let me go back real quick. Sorry, I'm kind of moving ahead of myself. So the, I call these power questions. And these are questions that I can ask that don't say specifically, tell me what you want. Because most people get very overwhelmed, okay? The first one, you know, what do you need from me, is I, 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 I ask my clients a lot. So we've, you know, we've gone through two coaching sessions. You know, what do you need from me at this point? What, what do you really, you know, what things have come up for you? So that, and that's not really addressing what you were talking about, Debbie, but the next three really do kind of like, uh, like the third one. What's something you've always wanted to do but haven't, you know? Or what's the craziest thing you can think of doing? Again, this isn't saying, you know, for this event. It's just, just in general. Or just for fun, list all the things you would love to do but think you can't. Um, so what are you guys thinking? And thanks, Debbie, for speaking up. What questions can you think of? Um, you know, what what experience are you looking for? Um, what feelings do you want to have in this experience? Yeah. Um, I, I, I in your previous slide and what you said, but being curious, I think, really o- opens up. Uh, my perspective in dealing with my customers in, instead of, you know, going down the standard sales route, uh, being curious, uh, learning a lot more about them and, and their business and what experiences they, they might have had, good or bad, and that'll, that, that can offer a lot of good information uh, in, in creating a great experience for them. Well, wow, and it sounds like you spend a lot of time building the relationship too. That's interesting. Right. If I, if I heard you correctly. Yeah. That's great. I love that idea of what they experience. I, I, and as you were speaking, a question that just popped in my head um, is, uh, what's the best event you've ever been to or, you know, or, or what's the, the, the neatest thing you've ever seen, you know, just to kind of see what their perspective is. But, um, yeah. Anything else? Well, and that, that, could, that could work. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
No, mine is mine is more because I do more personal stuff, and yeah. so mine isn't yeah. necessarily about um, asking them as many questions. Like, I mean, when you talk about the craziest thing, I mean, I had to find a surrogate for one of my clients. Oh wow! <laughs> um, I I had a client that actually lived um, I don't know where they live now, but I, Colorado, and they bought a place out here that. Um, <laughs> so. To, I think you you described it well. <laughs> so some of okay. the things that's what I'm saying. I actually really like the last question that you know just for fun let's. Let's talk about things you would love to do. I, I really like that because a lot of times people want them, because they're coming to Las Vegas, they, that's just what they say to me. Hey, I, I want to do something fun. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, what's your idea of fun? And, you know, yeah. so I, I like that last question a yeah, lot. Yeah, I love that. What, what's the most fun you've ever had? Yeah, I love that. Right, great. right, right, good. exactly. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay. I so let's go on to the next slide. So I think we've got that being specific with our clients is important. But the other thing that a lot of people, a lot of people don't think about is answering the question why. Finding out the values behind the desire helps understand what a client truly wants. I will tell you that all my clients, all of my clients come to me but they don't know the reason they're coming to me. They will state one thing that they want, but I always have to be open, because it's always true, is that they're coming to me for another reason. So there are some times when, um, an example for me was that I had a client, I'll say his name was Jeff, and he came to me because he wanted to start a fitness center. This fitness center was a not-for-profit fitness center for families so that the whole family could work out together. And that sounds really cool. I was like, wow, but yeah, let's do it. So I started with the initial coaching uh, exercises. You know, why don't you just dream about it, you know, sketch it out or make the logo or just, just have fun with it. Tell me what you want. And for three sessions, he never did any of the exercises that he said he wanted to do. And finally, I said to him, Jeff, it doesn't sound like or it doesn't feel like you want to do this project. And what he said to me was, Bob, but I would be such a nice guy. I'd be such a good guy if I did this. My family would love it. Bingo. He didn't want to start a fitness center. What he wanted was to be a good guy. So there's so many times wow. when people tell you what they want, but they, 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 they want an experience. We've already said that. They're looking for a certain experience, and they think that the asking for this certain thing is going to give it to them. <laughs> and there's also times when we can't give them what they want. You know what I mean? I want an elephant. Well, I can't give you an elephant, but tell me why you want the elephant. And my gut is if you can really figure out what, what it is they want, what experience, what value is being fulfilled, that actually your alternate will uh, make them even happier than they thought. So um, that's what this is about. Um, values always override wants. So if you can find out their values, because people will say to me all the time, well, you know, I really want a new career, but they're sitting in front of the TV. People's actions always show me what their values are. Those values can change once they're noticed or once they're, they're, they're brought out to the forefront. But people say, but I really want that new job. No, what their, what their values are is they value safety, and right now they're overwhelmed with looking for a new job, so they go to the TV. So my job as a coach is to make them feel safe, to, to kind of help them walk through that. And then all of a sudden, they're going to that new job, and they don't even know why they've got all this energy. So with clients, if there's, like, if there's a part where they're saying, I don't know, or there's like the walls that come up, or you're like, well, this just doesn't seem like it's going anywhere, stop and ask some questions. You know, maybe they've asked for something because their mom wants it. I know with weddings, you know. Mom wants this, and, and, but the, the daughter's saying, yeah, I want X, Y, and Z, but come to find out she really doesn't want it. It's her mom that wants it. Well, that's interesting. So um, does that make sense to everybody? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, is this about it, – it's hard because I, I will say again um, uh, is that when I'm, when I'm speaking to groups, which I do a lot, 
um, people are nodding and shaking their heads or people uh, get confused. I can see it in their eyes. And uh, my cat is staring at me right now. And my cat seems thoroughly entertained, but uh, I was just making sure you guys are. So with that, let's go to the next slide. <laughs> Value. So basically this slide kind of gives you some ideas of what to think about. Integrity, family, courage, learning, endeavor, balance, simplicity. These are some experiences that people might be seeking, but they don't have, they don't even know that they're seeking. Okay? But in the end, it's about satisfying the client's feelings and or values. So let's go ahead and go on to the next slide because you guys will have these. The power question. Why are you looking? Why are you looking right now? Why is this event important to you at this point? What top three feelings do you want to have after your event? Tell me about three places or events you've seen and why you like them. What were your feelings about them? And what needs to happen to make your life better? Now, that's kind of a coaching, coaching question, I'll admit. I mean, that's something I would ask. But I also could see, like, well, how is this event going to help you? you know, how, is this move, uh, how is this move going to help your life? You know, whatever it may be. Now, I will put... Uh, uh, these questions, um, I, I definitely suggest you put them in your own uh, phrasing, your own vocabulary, your own way you would say them. I do not suggest you just use, use like you, you pull out a piece of paper and say, okay, Bob said to say, what top three feelings do you want? I, I wouldn't do that. So, but you get the idea of uh, that these questions are going to seek out what, what the client really uh, wants as in terms of feeling and that experience. Okay, so uh, with that said, these are about, I keep saying values, you could actually, mm, you could substitute that word for feeling. So what feeling do you want with this experience? Also, here's a tip from a coach. Then with working with clients, feelings are okay. I think sometimes that we talk about reaction versus responding. Um, when I've worked with some leaders, that they will have uh, one of their uh, subordinates, you know, lash out, have a big emotion, and then they feel like they have to react. And I have a feeling in your industry, people are spending money, they're, you know, they're trying to impress people with events, or they're trying to have the best experience possible. So I can expect that some feelings, some, some, some fears can be um, are brought up. So just as a, as a hint from the coaches that, when those big feelings pop up, um, the more that you can stay neutral and just allow those feelings to be, the more you'll move through them. If you react to the feelings, then the person reacts, and that wall of defensiveness or, uh, uh, will come up, and then it's harder to interact with them. So just an added bonus. <laughs> so let's go move on to the next slide. Just to remind you that you are actually taking your clients from pain to pleasure. That is the goal, Okay. So, and that's being a little dramatic. You're like, my clients are not in pain. I get that. Some of my clients are. But with that said, what you're doing is you're taking them from uh, what, they, you know, what they think they want or the uh, deficit in their life and then giving them what they do want, that experience that is going to make their life better. So the more when you're talking to people that you can bring out that pain, not to make them feel in pain, but the more you can understand what it is that they're trying to fulfill and the more you can then give them that, 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 that plan of the pleasure part, the more they will buy into it and the more they will help you along with the experience. Okay? And also, don't assume you know what they need. Find out why they're seeking in the first place. That is an important part. Okay? Let's go on to the next slide. I only get time for, for questions. So this is an extra credit. This is going with the feelings that I was just talking about, not uh, reacting to feelings. So um, a lot of times I always hear people in conversation, and person A will start, say something, and person B will say, yes, but what you don't understand is, but when they say the yes, but, the but is saying, uh, is negating what you've just said in the first part of your statement. It's very subtle, but that's the way the people that wall defensiveness can come up for the client. So if you hear a client and they're not going in the direction that you want them to go, or they're you know, something that is just, you know, you're, you're against. You say yes because you want them to think that you actually agree with them, but now you want to give your own opinion. That but is telling them that you don't believe them. So a suggestion I have is, you can go to the next slide, please. 
Yes, and. Yes, and let me add to what you say, because when people make comments, they are right. When a person makes a comment, they are right. And, uh, well, they're right according to them and their perspective. You know? Even if it's wrong information, it's still right to them because that's how they feel or whatever. But yes, and then maybe you have information to give. Now, where this comes from is, I said I was an actor, and in improv, there is a rule called yes, and. And when you're in a scene with a partner, the rule is you can never say no to what they give you. So an example is if I'm in a scene with somebody and I say to that person, hey, bro, uh, mom said that dinner's on the table. And my scene partner goes, I'm not your brother. Immediately the scene dies. It's hard to kind of recover from that. <laughs> but if I say to my scene partner, hey, bro, mom said, that, uh, mom said dinner's on the table. I said, great. And by the way, did you know you were adopted? I took what he <laughs> gave me and I added it. Okay? It didn't make him wrong per se, but I added to it. So sometimes it's clients be aware of, or even in general when talking to people. That, yes, and. and I think ahead. yes, and, and also right. draws people in. Yes, it yes, does. That is the makes point. you immediately want to put like, like your hand up like, Stop talking, I'm going to talk, and yes, and seems more of an open arm. Yeah. And even if, even if they're crazy, if they, even if it's the craziest idea, saying yes, I, I think of it as I hear what you're saying, you know, and even yeah. kind of repeating back what they say. And let me invite you into this thought. But what about this thought, you know? So it just kind of adds, uh, like, let me add to what you've just given me. So, uh, yeah. So um, we got started a little late, um, but I'm glad that we got to, got, got to get through that. Um, I wanted to give time for questions now. So if we go to the next slide, it's just, uh, oh, I guess we're already there. Sorry. Um, <laughs> let's, you're, you're good. Uh, so this is the time to just ask a question, get a coach's perspective. Yes. I have a question. Um, this is Monet Williams, and I'm in Minneapolis. Um, so I've recently just launched um, my business, and I primarily have private clients who I can really sell. You know, to me it seems like it's been really easy to sell on to the private clients. But um, when I try to pitch to, let's say, a commercial or residential building, um, it seems like I'm getting more pushback from that arena. And I think some of it has to do with me being so green in that space. Um, so two things, I guess. I do have my differentiating factors, and I know who my competition is, um, but what advice would you give me to someone who is green in the industry on really trying to get into some more of those larger clients? Okay. Well, let me ask you this. So what's different uh, between your private clients and your um, corporate clients or your bigger clients? Well, the private clients are more of that one-on-one -on -one personal assistant. So whatever they need, and it's basically the same services. So I can order flowers and make dinner reservations uh -huh. for my private clients, and I can also do that for the tenants who reside in the buildings sure. that um, I'd like to be the concierge for. Yeah. So then, so I, I love that you said that you have more of a, a personal connection. So and let's invite other people to kind of uh, chime in on this. So. Uh, and we're talking about you know building that connection. I think um, Alex had mentioned that he you know really gets to know his clients, you know, and, and not just for the uh, purpose of selling, but you know getting to know everything about their business. So I'm wondering how you can build a more personal connection with your corporate, corporate or your uh, more larger group. What, what do people think? Networking events, stopping okay. by, finding out who your HOA is or your property manager or even go above the on-site and go to their corporate office. That's how we did it here. Okay. Well, I went to so many networking events um, with real estate agents and people like that, and that's how we ended up in um, the buildings that we ended up in. How, do you, so, how did you um, get into those 
spaces when you were new? Like, was that a, did you find that was a deterrent in the beginning? Because um, one of the questions I get, well, have you done this before? And if the answer is no, but it's really no, but I have done this for my private clients and I want to bring that to this larger space. So how did you overcome that? Relationships, building relationships with the yeah. people that are the decision makers. That is. It took, I yeah. mean, it wasn't something that happened overnight at all. It was a long mm-hmm. time coming, but it was, I, and, and that's just my personality. I work constantly, and I go to every networking event that I can find. Um, again, lots of the real estate offices where I could um, go in and talk to different people, the, um, the, the developers of the buildings that are getting ready to make the decision on who they're going to use to uh, man their front desk. Um, and then it's, our biggest challenge was money. A lot of the times we couldn't beat the money that the HOA companies like First Service, um, they underbid us. And we offered a much better service. We, I actually lost, lost three buildings last year and I actually had the developer who pulled them from us call me to his office and tell me that the grass is not greener and they wish they would not have. Mm. So something I want to point out uh, that was just said, and I, when I, I'm assuming this is Debbie, if I heard correctly. Is this Debbie talking? Yes, yes. Okay, so something I heard Debbie say, though, and I think when I, you just mentioned that you're really good at this, is building relationships. Because your private clients you've built relationships with, and you must be good at it if you're having an easy time with your private clients. So right. uh, I'm wondering how to look at your you know, larger clients as private clients. You know what I mean, of course they're not the same, you know, but to kind of view them in the same relationship building place. You know, and I, and I think that uh, Debbie had, gave some great, great opportunities for you to be in contact with all of them. But um, so what are some ways, maybe one or two ways that you could take what you know from the private clients and apply it to your uh, larger clients or, or potential larger clients? What do you think? I think it's something to think about, and I, I, I feel like that's where it's very difficult. Because um, okay. uh, I, I, and I'm, I'm brainstorming now as I'm trying to collect my thoughts. But, um, sure. you know, when it, when you meet with a private client, you're really trying to understand like their needs as an individual, and yeah. showing how you can go above and beyond for them as an individual. And so when I, when I am trying to apply that to an entire building, it's really not the individual I'm talking to is ah. really saying, I can provide this for your entire building, like that one-on-one but, personal experience. Yes, and, <laughs> yes, and, yes, and, <laughs> you're talking to an individual, though, to get that context, right? So, yes, you're presenting for the whole building, but you're also talking to an individual or maybe individuals you know, to get them to contract you. Is that true? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. Do you think that a good question, like just say if we could role play for a second, <laughs> if yeah, I would, sure, ask, sure. Would, would, would it resonate with you if I asked the question, you know, if you had a personal assistant, what would you want from that person? And even though they're the representative of the apartment or, or commercial building, maybe they can still think about if they were in a, a private client or a if they were the recipient of the services of a concierge. Uh, if, if, it, if it was a, if it was a big, large, large client, um, so um, I think that the intention of the question is great. Um, I, I, and other people can chime in because I'm not in your industry. Um, I, I think that the intention of getting that information is great. I'm not sure about that specific question though. Okay. What do you guys think? Because I think that I think that when you're building a relationship, like I, I presented some general questions, you know. But in truth, you know, I, I trust someone that I can feel like I can, that is not trying to get something from me. You know what I mean? So, I mean, the more you can notice stuff about people and make comments about what you've noticed, I think if, if there's stuff about, if you know, like I love the networking thing because maybe you'll learn information, you know, personal information, you know, not, not major personal information, but, you know, things that people make a personal connection to. And then, you know, uh, another suggestion I've seen work with clients I'm not sure if this will work with this industry, and you can please tell me, is that my clients I will tell to go to uh, something that they're, they're, like an industry that they're looking for, okay, that they wanted a client, and say, you know what, I need some help with how to reach these people. Can I take you back to coffee? I need you to kind of tell me, not, I'm not looking for business, and subtext, I'm not looking for business with your company, 
but looking at how to better uh, serve uh, you know, if, if it's larger, you know, if you have one contact. What do you guys think? Does that make sense? My comment to, to um, you would be, are the, the buildings that you're looking to get into, are they buildings that already have a concierge or do not have a concierge? Um, oh, that do not have one currently and that are so, new. I'm, I'm going after so new So my new suggestion property. would be you're not looking to go in and be necessarily, say, the on-site concierge. You're looking to assist their clients that's going to make their lives easier. And by getting to know whoever it is, whether it's the, uh, the people that, that, like I said, in, in Nevada, Las Vegas, the majority of my clients, we work through HOA offices. And so going in and talking to the people that literally are running the building, that are on site on a daily basis, that I don't mean necessarily security or those people, but people that are going to be on site, that are going to be helping residents with um, their billing, that they have a problem in their unit, that type of thing. I would be trying to go into an office, um, meet those people and put together something that you can show them. I know this is you guys' job, but I'm trying to help make your job because most of the time in, in those situations when you have an HOA, they're considered the bad guy because all they do is enforce rules and um, they, they, they're not always the good guy. Where what we have found is we kind of end up being the good guy, but by being the good guy, it alleviates some of the problems for the HOA, a la. I have a leak in my, in my um, condominium, and they go down to the HOA, and the HOA says, well, unfortunately, you own it, so you have to take care of it yourself, where you oh, would wow. be able to go in and say, um, I can assist you with that. I can, you know, if you're not going to be home, I can do weight service in your unit for you. Um, uh, you'd have to have a really um, approved vendor that the building will take that has all the correct licensing and insurance in order to come in and do the work, but you're going to assist the HOA so that they don't end up being a bad guy by just turning the people away, and you're going to, they can say, well, here's somebody that might be able to assist you with the leak in your unit, you know, or your garbage disposal is not working or that type of thing. And then what I have found, because the majority of our clients are absentee homeowners. They, this is their second home, third home. Um, you know, I, I go to their homes. I go to their condos. I make sure that there's no leaks. And if they are, I report that back to them immediately. And 90% of the time they say, go ahead and take care of it. So just this a thought. This all sounds great. Thank you so much for jumping in with that. That, that, that sounds like it's great. I'm sure it's helping, helping a lot. And actually, you guys might want to chat offline, too. <laughs> great. Yeah, sounds like a good resource. Um, yeah, sorry to monopolize yeah, yeah. much of the conversation. <laughs> no, it's a great conversation. I'm glad it helps. I think it, it really brought a lot of great points. So um, we are near the end of our time. I know that um, Pat said we need to end right at 5. Um, so, um, Pat? Uh, is there anything else that we need to do for housekeeping? No, I think we're good. I think I just want to say thank you, obviously, Bob, for being, taking your time to do this with us today. And I hope of all of you that attended got some got some valuable information from him. I know I did. So wonderful. great. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, yeah, I really actually I really enjoyed the the discussion and conversation. So thank you for that. And good. I wish everyone the best of luck. So thank you. Great. Thank awesome. you. All. Thank, Thank you. Very great, much. great information. Yep. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the Have time. Have a great day. Of course. Thank you. Hmm.